five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. The U.S. Missile Defense Program faces a bevy of challenges as it continues in its push to field ballistic missile defeating technologies against more and more advanced threats around the globe. A major issue for the agency today is fielding enough missile defenses including radars and interceptors, to counter the proliferating missiles capable of striking in short and medium ranges. Generally, commanders are satisfied with the posture of PAC-3 air and missile defense battery, but they want more terminal high-altitude area defense, or THAAD systems, which have added to the capability of the PAC-3 by being able to perform intercepts both inside the atmosphere and above it in space. This is a complex propulsion challenge, as the system must be able to deal with maneuvering in air as well as in the vacuum of space. Two THAAD batteries with a total of 48 missiles are delivered and ready for deployment when needed. The Aegis ship-based regional ballistic missile defense system has seen growing support in recent years owing in large part to a successful test campaign using the ship's advanced software managed by Lockheed Martin and Raytheon's SM-3 family of interceptors. There is high demand around the globe especially in the Mediterranean and Pacific regions, for more Aegis ships equipped with the SPY-1S band radar and a growing magazines of 90 SM-31A interceptors. MDA's budget used to be around $9 billion annually, and it has recently been cut to between $7.5 and $8 billion. A major question for the incoming director will be how much of these limited resources he will dedicate toward fielding more THAAD batteries and SM-3s and what portion of the budget will go toward continued development and testing. A subject likely to be heavily debated after the November presidential election will be how to protect the east coast of the United States from a nuclear ICBM-armed Iran. President Bush was right that Iran's ballistic missile program poses a significant threat. Under President Barack Obama, the White House threw its weight behind the Aegis program, selecting it in 2009 as the centerpiece for its phased adaptive approach toward defending large parts of Europe, and possibly as soon as 2021, the east coast of the United States from a long-range Iranian ballistic missile attack. The move was controversial, as it stunted plans for an expansion of the Boeing-led ground-based missile defense interceptors into Poland. Advocates of that system, called the GMD, are likely to reemerge once Army Lieutenant General Patrick O'Reilly's successor takes office to advocate for a larger footprint for the program. Constrained funding, however, will limit what MDA is capable of developing. Though zealous missile defense advocates continue to argue for such controversial capabilities as space-based kinetic kill interceptors or directed energy technologies, these are unlikely to emerge in the next 10 years without significant investment. These questions, while complex, are a far cry from the issues facing the program only a decade ago. Today, I have given formal notice to Russia, in accordance with the treaty, that the United States of America is withdrawing from this almost 30-year-old treaty. At that time, President George W. Bush announced the U.S. withdrawal from compliance with the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty with Russia, allowing for more testing of GMD, Aegis, and THAAD. Also at that time, Democrats in Congress were pushing to curb missile defenses. Today, the debate is not whether to pursue missile defense, but in what form and to what extent. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle now agree that some measure of defenses is needed. I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomplished before the end of this century. MDA has not fully realized the vision laid out in 1983 by President Ronald Reagan when he established the Strategic Defense Initiative Organization, which was the first coordinated U.S. office designed to pool resources and counter the strategic threat of Soviet ICBMs. But the Pentagon has slowly inched closer to forming a loose defensive framework and, potentially, a deterrent capability for would-be adversaries. Deterrence, however, is only as good as the testing program can prove the system to be. The Boeing-led GMD system is under pressure to produce a successful flight test after multiple failed attempts. The last successful intercept took place in December 2008. After implementing and thoroughly testing fixes to the Raytheon Exoatmospheric Kill Vehicle, the hit-to-kill mechanism deployed by the GMD interceptor, MDA expects to conduct a flight test in December. Though no target will be flown, the trial is designed to characterize the capabilities of the kill vehicle before attempting a full-on intercept next spring. One other problem in achieving true deterrence by the U.S. system is the small numbers of interceptors in the field. One of the reasons behind the Obama White House's decision to shift MDA's focus to developing and fielding Aegis and THAAD 
was an alarming projected increase in the stockpiles of threat missiles around the globe. The threat of a so-called raid attack, multiple missiles of multiple types launched nearly simultaneously, still lingers. Though MDA plans a major graduation exercise for the fall to include five targets and three interceptor types, THAAD, SM-3, and PAC-3, the U.S. will be hard-pressed to counter an actual raid attack without dedicating substantially more funding toward procuring and fielding more systems.